Yo, what's up, everyone? It is the Beast Brian London, Brandon O'Doy. It's the Real Ones, Canes crew, and the Miami Hurricanes pull off an amazing victory, double overtime victory over Clemson at Hard Rock Stadium. Brandon, this one looked real interesting early. We we got word just before the game Emory Williams was going to start at quarterback, TVD out, possible leg injury, and uh, the freshman did just enough along with a great offensive line performance, great running performance by a couple of running backs, and a great defensive performance against Clemson to get the victory. Yeah, it was a very scary situation for Miami for much of the latter half of this game, but Miami was fortunate enough, some questionable calls, you know, with regard to game management were overcome, and Miami walks out of here with a 28-20 to win. Beast, it's what we talked about even after last week. It's these third quarter Miami letdowns that are continuing to plague this team. 35 points given up in the third quarter over the past two games. And this is something that this team just cannot continue to get and survive. But you have to credit Coach Mario Cristobal and this staff, particularly Shannon Dawson, for managing a true freshman quarterback to win a game at home against an ACC juggernaut like Clemson, they've got all kinds of questions to answer. Yeah. And that would have been our night tonight. But thank goodness for double overtime and A.J. Allen, uh, a great performance from an offensive line that has struggled in, in recent memory here and a defensive performance to remember with really key and critical plays, big plays by big talents. And that's what you need to win ball games. Just left the Mario Cristobal press conference, and he talked about, I specifically asked him about managing Emory with knowing he's a freshman, big-time situation, biggest stage, under the lights, prime time. How do you manage the offensive play calling with a freshman at the helm for this entire game? And he said, I've never seen a cat-and-mouse game with a coordinator going back and forth <laughs> with different play calls like you saw tonight. And you can imagine what was going on in the headsets. But they have a freshman out there going against the Clemson defense. It's, it's pretty darn good. And in the end, you know, he made a bad play in the first half, turned it over, but did just enough in the end, uh, kept his composure, looked uh, comfortable, didn't look like he was uh, nervous at all in the second half, especially late in the game, and did just enough um, to get them to victory. But, man... Colby Young uh, came up big uh, for him on a couple of catches, and he, he really not needed that bailout for some playmakers tonight. But that's what you do. You get the ball to your playmakers, and that's what game managers do, and that's what he is, and it's fair to be that as a true freshman quarterback. You get the ball to the guys that are most capable, and you make sure that they have an opportunity to make the plays. Colby Young, Xavier Restrepo, they did that tonight. Bashard Smith, he comes in. He gets this team off to a great 7-0 start. We talked about potentially using more people on offense than just Restrepo. There's nothing against him, but this is the University of Miami. You're supposed to have a bevy of talent, and when you have that kind of talent, you have to put it to good use. Smith has been a running back his entire life, going back to youth football at the Richmond Giants organization in Richmond, Piran, South Miami. So putting him back there, that's a place he feels comfortable being, and he is super fast, and you saw that on tonight now he's probably not in the shape to run right what he ran because he kind of slowed down although he looked really fast on his kickoff return touchdown uh a few weeks ago but nevertheless the ball got into the end zone jacoby george you know he he, he jumped on it the fumble which was a super bad play you can't make that but right. it, you know just things it was miami's night in in so many respects so many things could have been disastrous but they just weren't and that's why I'm, we're sitting here talking about a Kane's victory. Talk about the freshman in Emory Williams, another freshman who really stood out tonight, played unbelievable, looked like Ruben. he was an, an upperclassman. Ruben Hurricane Bain yeah. uh, just dominated tonight, really had a great game. Well, listen, you, you recruit guys and you go into deep recruiting battles for, season, for, for, for games like this. That's why you go get a Reuben Bain. That's why you hold off Louisville and Auburn and everybody else that was coming after this guy. That's why you open up the collectives because when this guy can make the plays that he made tonight and to become an absolute terror at whatever size he is, he's not that big. He's only about 6'2 and some change. He is a man, and he is strong. 
and credit the Miami Central program for getting him ready. Credit the strength and conditioning staff here at the University of Miami for taking him as an early enrollee for sure. and making his body ready to play a full season. Because you got to remember, your first year playing football in college, you're usually worn out by this time. Yeah. Because you're just so completely unready for it and so unused to it. And he's been balling out of control and we're past the halfway point and that's a very impressive thing for a true freshman reuben bain going to be a freshman all-american very special player by the way in the post-game press conference he said he felt like he was 70 years old the way his body felt after yeah. this one it was a physical game but speaking of that you know the difference between miami last year against clemson and this year against clemson especially in the trenches physicality wise you could tell this team the dna is changing on that front it's interesting i talked to his brother his brother is on the offensive line staff his older brother he played at fau i talked to his brother you know what he told me after the game because he walked ruben to the press conference he said um his name's reggie he said uh yeah those boys earn their nil money tonight yeah you bring in those big guys like a matt lee you bring in the young man from alabama all of a sudden now you can say yeah we're glad we went in the off season paid these guys brought these guys to miami for night's night tonight and that's what it was really all about yeah questionable things happen why were timeouts not taken on that last drive while we still had regulation why weren't a field goal at least tried there by Bora Gallus give him an opportunity to tie the game there's so many other things that could have gone wrong and I have a question my question is why didn't we see this offense with Tyler Van Dyke let's let's run for over 200 yards Miami put up 200 they put up a hundred and no, I'm sorry, 211 yards rushing tonight. Right, and 80 of it came on the Brashard Smith run, but you still got, I think, 60-something uh, from Cheney and 50-something from A.J. Allen. Uh, 68 so, from Cheney, yeah. 57 from A.J. Allen. Yeah. Harrell even chipped in seven. Yeah. But at the end of the day, they were averaging three, almost three and a half yards apiece. And so what that means is it's three yards in a cloud of dust, and then I can throw a bubble – you know, right. to get that first down. And that's how they manage and this quarterback. Let me ask you a question, that's right? That's how it works. Yeah, Clemson sees that, that TVD is not starting. They know it's a freshman. What is Clemson thinking Miami is going to do on offense, right? It's going to be run the ball, right? They're going to run the ball. There's no way they're going to let a freshman come out here right. and throw the ball all around. And he wasn't until he had to. Right. And this is why I think he played the best game of his life tonight. Because his stat line coming into that fourth quarter was atrocious. Bad. He didn't even have... I don't think he has 70 yards passing. He had 73 yards passing, like somewhere midway through the, the fourth. I don't know what okay. it was coming into the fourth. And he finishes with 151. Right. He was 24 for 33, one interception and one touchdown. His longest pass of the night was 25 yards. Think about that. Now, he would have hit Kobe Young on a bomb. Yeah. He dropped it. You cannot do that, Kobe. And that's one of the problems that TVD had. He couldn't trust all of the receivers. But you got to give these guys credit and time. I like the distribution tonight. Streppo, Young, Rashard Williams, Riley Williams, Kobe George, Don Chaney, AJ, Cam McCormick. You know what I mean? Like Isaiah Horton. These people all caught passes tonight. It's a different offense when you don't have to cater to a guy that really likes to hone in on about two or three receivers. It opens everything up. On the other side of the football, that stand in double overtime, uh, right towards the goal line. I mean, it, they have to make a stand there, yeah. and they did. They got it done. Lance Gidry dialed up some some great play calling there. Listen, this defensive front, Harrison Hunt, Reuben Bain, Taylor, Allen, um, Dean, um, you know, Jafar Harvey, all the guys that came in and, you know, were rotated. And here's the crazy part. They played lights out, and they're still missing, missing so guys, many. They're yeah. missing their best guy, arguably, Mesador. in Mesador. Yep. Kelly didn't play tonight. Nope, right. Uh, I mean, let's talk about how many guys didn't play. You had no, um, you had no Henry Paris. No Mark Fletcher. No, no TVD. No Mark Fletcher. No TVD. No, D, no Kelly. He's he's been right. getting most of the reps. Right at, at, at DN. No Mesidor. No Mesidor. He's been out since the very beginning of the season. Right. And uh, Cam Kitchens went down to a very critical time in the game. Right. 
You had uh, a young Col man come in. I think uh, Colby Young went out for a little Colby bit. Colby Young went out with some concussion issues. Or they were checking, putting right. it through protocol, it looked like. You know, the, the trainer had his helmet. So Miami has shown that they have depth to be able to survive and beat good teams. That's never happened in this 20-year tenure that we talk about all of the time. So this is a new Miami. This is a new brand of football. And what they did was bail out a coaching staff that's still trying to figure out the proper way to manage a game, and they won close, which they failed to do against Georgia Tech. Let me tell you something, and I'll shut up. The SEC is not itself this year. The ACC is what the SEC typically is. Whoa. Any given Saturday in the ACC, Virginia won. They beat North Carolina tonight. Yep. They're the worst team in the league almost. They beat North Carolina on the road. This is a league where you can lose at any given time, and this is a strong league this year, evidenced by tonight. Duke almost beat Florida State. Would have if their quarterback didn't get hurt. Their backup quarterback wasn't very good. But, Brandon, we, we talk about but the guess ACC. guess whose backup quarterback was good today? Yep, Miami's. But we talk about the ACC. Um, I'm just wondering if Miami had not won this game. I mean, the spiral goes. It just keeps going, right? Because – you lose three in a row. You're talking about Mario hadn't won an ACC game at home. Bad, bad things are creeping in. Um, but a must-win game for both teams, and Miami pulls it out. Both teams, we talked about on the pod this week. Yep. Both teams come in 4-2. and two. Both teams at a crossroads with their coaches. Both teams, you know, going to have a lot of answers, more questions than answers. After this game, I'm thankful to good. <laughs> I'm thankful to God so we don't have to drive home and listen to absolute hysteria uh that miami was able to pull this game off it did not look good the decision to go over overtime paid off miami played incredibly inspired football and to be honest thinking about it it was probably a safer bet to trust emory williams from 25 yards in than to trust him from 50 plus out yeah no doubt about it and sure. that's coaching you and listen clemson got out coached and, and and i never thought i would say that uh but they got out close to that. You saw it. But I, I don't think that is able to happen if Miami doesn't have the, the physical type players and the type of athletes that they've been able to get yeah. and groom. Um, I don't think it comes down to those, coaching. Th those portal additions on the yeah. offensive line make a game like tonight possible where you had to protect a young quarterback by switching to a run first uh, offensive formula. If you cannot, if you had the line you had last year, Forget you lose, about it. you get blown out of this state. Forget about it, yeah. So credit to everybody who had anything to do with bringing those guys in and putting it together. Credit to, you know, graduate assistant Bain, Ruben's older brother, and credit to um, Coach um, Alex Maribald. Yeah, no and, and, and credit Coach Cristobal, man. He, You know, he came up to me after the game. He was obviously excited, you know, and – at the end of the day, this is why he came to Miami to do things people have never done, and up to this point, and and, and this is a twenty year life. I can't, I can't ever remember being at a Clemson game that was close. That well, was even I mean, the last close. time the last time they had a lead on Clemson was two thousand ten. This is the crazy thing, two thousand and ten. I would have walked out of here had they even lost this game in overtime and thought, wow, it feels cool that what used to be the banner team in this conference, right. Miami played a close game with. Yeah, no because doubt. every listen, my introduction to this beat was Miami getting handed their head handed to them because you don't play Clemson every year with the the old right. with the old Atlantic and Coastal and everything, right. so you only play them occasionally. Fifty nothing, fifty two. What was fifty eight to nothing? Fifty eight to nothing yep. on this same field. Yep, it was bad. It was reconfigured and wide open back then, but it's man that 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 game just looked like a team that did not belong but see clemson has some structural issues too and i'll point to this they've always had a guy that's taken in the first round of quarterback they don't have one of those nope they've always had defensive linemen that you knew by name they don't have any of those and they always had a guy either on the receiving side or the defensive back side are usually both that you absolutely knew, and I just think Shipley was hurt tonight. He made some plays, but I don't think he was himself. He wasn't himself. And, and guess what? You can't come in here and win. Miami's too good for that. So next week, it's homecoming. We don't know what time the game is yet. Um, by the time you watch us or listen to it, maybe you'll know. But we don't know as we're taping this. Um, 
And it's a game against a Virginia team that's going to feel confident after getting a win against a good North Carolina team. They're going to come in here and give Miami all they can handle. But Miami's got some confidence now, too, after the last two weeks. So it's going to be interesting to see um, if Miami can continue. You know, Ruben Bain talked about it. He said practice was just different this week. People were going crazy. The confidence was crazy in practice this week. Miami's got to keep that up. Yeah. Now, I'd be curious to see, you know, what those guys said in that interview room. I'm sure we'll have plenty of time to talk about it. But, you know, hey, they got out of here with a win, and I'm impressed. I am impressed. Do me a favor, go subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcast on the Spotify, on the Apple, on uh, the Google, the Amazon, wherever you get your podcast. Go subscribe to the podcast and subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. For Brandon O'Doy, I'm the Beast Brian London. We're here at Hard Rock Stadium. The Canes beat Clemson in double overtime, baby. They are now 5-2 and two on the season. We will check you later this week on the Real Ones Canes podcast.